the Lord. I actually want us to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On our program, the next is to uh, take our opening prayers. But immediately after the opening prayers, we are going to have the Bible reading to be taken by Mrs. Borokini. Then immediately after the Bible reading, we are going to have Mrs. Topa to be read to us by Dr. Shin. So please let take note of that change. Please put your hands together for the Lord as I invite Pastor Sammy to take us to the open prayers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord says that we should not mourn like people who are broken. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. In your world, all things work together for good. That's why in this moment, Father, we say we thank you. Thank you for the band of Islam. Thank you for the good of Islam. Thank you because we know that all things work together for good. Father, we pray this very hour that as we commence this funeral service, you will have your way in our midst in the name of Jesus. We ask Heavenly Father that you take preeminence of our gathering this very moment in the name of Jesus. We ask the Lord that Holy Spirit divine, you reign supreme in our midst today in the name of Jesus. Every other arrangement that is contrary to whatever we shall be doing here today, our Father and our Lord, we cancel and we notify in the name of Jesus. We ask for the Spirit of God that every word that will proceed from this spot today will regenerate our body, soul, and spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Therefore, we pray and declare this can be opened this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let somebody shout, Hallelujah. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, 
then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain? And your faith is also in vain? Yeah, and we have found false witnesses of God because we have, we have testified of God that He raised up Christ, who will raise not all. If so be that the dead Christ not. For if the dead Christ not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is dead. Yet and yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Even this life, only we have hope in Christ, we are all of men more most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of their last spirit. For sins by man came dead, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit, afterward they that are in Christ as his coming. Then cometh the end, when we shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when we shall have put down all the rule and all authority and power. For you must pray till we have put all enemies under our feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We will be taking moments to find out now. Please let me welcome Dr. Shen to this and for our session. Um, this is the program of Mrs. Oluwatu in the Lion Panjo in Shuri. Mrs. Oluwatu in the Lion Panjo was born on 8th July 1958 to late part James Oladu of Shuri of the renowned Timwa Shuri family of Shalami. Late Mama Felicia Abibola Shuri Nimele of the famous Elevaji family, also from Shaman. She grew up with her parents, brothers, and sisters in an ambience of love, respect, integrity, care, and other Christian values as a village and ladies. Mrs. Olwachi Banja attended Luba Nursery and Public School in Jabodi. She had a secondary school education at Olusi College in Jabulu. She attended the Protestant Teacher Training College for her teacher certificate in education. Her quest for learning led her to enroll for a part-time degree course at the University of Lagos, where she obtained a BSc in Business Administration. She started her teaching career at the Seventh Day Adventist Primary School at Bulogia Lagos where she developed an intrinsic love for children. She taught in many other schools thereafter under the Lagos State School Management Board before voluntarily retiring in 1993 to manage the family's business of commodities and export and frozen food. She was happily married to the husband of a youth, Mr. Nelson Tony Manager. The marriage, to the glory of God, is blessed with successful children and many other children. Mrs. Oluwatu Ibanjo served God diligently. Started from St. Paul's African Church in the beginning, where she was the head of the children's department before the family relocated to each group in Lagos. While her husband continued to worship as the baby, she and the children joined the Redeemed Christian Church of God Faith Sanctuary in each group that was worshipping under a canopy name. At the instance of the pastor of Victory Center of RCCG that started on her street, as a human street, she joined in growing the parish as the head of the children of the and continued worshiping with them even after the church moved out of the street to the family itself. The distance, however, made her and her husband to join part of the part of the space parish of the RCCG, still on a human street, where she served the Lord and she was called to go. Her work in the Lord's vineyard was not limited to the church. She was a committed member of the Full Gospel Movement Center Fellowship International 
and actively for the fellowship. She served the Lord wholeheartedly in the fellowship, especially at the chapter level, with an enviable record of attending most of the fellowship meetings. Her support contributed in no small measure to the appointment of her husband as the national director of the fellowship. She was a cheerful leader. She was faithful in giving towards the work of God and to the media, most times discreetly. Being fully persuaded that the left hand should not know what the right hand is doing, as in Matthew 6, verse 3. Mrs. Dodo asked me about the impact of the exemplary mother. She surrounded her children with prayers, faith, and love. Always willing to give so that the children would accept. She was a thief of the exemplary mother. A gentle, peaceful, and quiet soul has a present this world. Goodbye, Jerry. Goodbye, Mama. Goodbye, Mama. Goodbye, Mama. That's the purpose of this day. We are trying to go in our generation. If you want to clap, you can please clap. Praise the Lord. We are going to be taking the sound, but just before that, we are going to be taking the set. Him, him. 340 Blessed Assurance. Immediately after our pastor in charge of Zoom, Pastor Emi Olajuwon will be coming to bring his counsel to us and uh, be blessed in Jesus' name. Father, I will take the next thing, please.
This is not a time for plenty of many saddles. It's a time just to reflect on God's word as it pertains to the, the end of life. Our mommy has lived for about 65 years or thereabouts. And um, an end has come to an era. And we want to reflect on the impact of how life is being spent. And I want to look at from the words of the wisest man that ever lived apart from Jesus. And that one is Solomon. We want to look in a few minutes what Solomon said about life. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. And I read from verse 1. Solomon began speaking. He said, To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven. He said, A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck all that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. He said in verse 4, he said there is a time to weep, and there is a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. He said a time to cast the west stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. He said in verse 6, he said, a time to get and a time to lose. A time to lose. A time to win and a time to cast. A time to keep and a time to cast away. He said in verse 7, a time to rain and a time to sow. A time to be silent and a time to speak. He said, a time to love and a time to hate. A time to war and a time of peace. What profit has he that walketh in that we are in deliverance? Verse 7. He said, I have seen the travail which God has given to the sons of man to be exercised in it. Verse 11, the last verse for this panel, or for this study, he said, He has made everything beautiful in his own time. Also, he has set the wall in their hearts. So that no one can find out the work that God made from the beginning to the end. I think we want to give a topic to so this message this morning. I like the topic in or title is there is a time for everything. Someone was speaking, he said there's a time to be born. And he said there's a time to die. I'm sure everyone under the influence of my voice this morning understand the fact that life is a journey. And coincidentally, not all of us have the same bus stop. Several people who begin a journey, some of their own bus stop could just be a few big meters away from their starting point. Or find out for the bus stop of our mommy, she has spent 65 years on their road. However, Jesus himself spent about 23. So which means we may be in good company. But Solomon was speaking. He said there is a time for everything. I could see Mama's daughter reading the profile and I could see tears already in her face or in her eyes. Because perhaps checking out that the life of a woman has gone. All of a sudden, she's now being spoken about in past days. But because of the little time we have this morning, friends, a time will come in our various lives where people begin to refer to us in past days. I remember the song of that, of that hymn writer. He said, he said, there will be a gathering very soon, very soon. He said, there will be a gathering very soon, very soon. He said, we shall cross Jordan to the side of God. The question, therefore, I'm going to ask you this afternoon or this morning is that when death closes your own ID, what will be said about you? So many times when we go for waking in or a funeral service like this and people are asked to speak, almost everybody will say, oh, this person is a good person. This person is a good person. He's, he's, he's this, he's that. Nobody ever comes to say he's a bad person, particularly in Africa. But the reality of the fact is when people begin to go home and they are going two by two, three by three, we begin to know the reality of the kind of 
why that fellow of him. The question I want to ask you today, and so when the year began, the pastor of the church would have said, You will not die. And I'm saying it, you will not die. Amen. Also, many of you are saying, Amen, hey, you will not die. Amen. But the truth is that a time will come in the life of a man that death becomes an inevitable. Our theology of death, particularly the Pentecostal, has been twisted. Death will come. But the question is, how do we face death when it comes? Death will come. How will we face death at its arrival? So, when death is coming, I, I, I remember when I was on the plane, and there was turbulence, and it appears as if the plane was going to crash land. That's when you now begin to see people say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. That's when they were, we are face to face with death. And I said, Lord, God, forgive me of my sins. The particular end of state died in this in, in, in our land. And everybody began to rejoice. The question I'm going to ask is that when the season of death comes, what do we say? Because all of us that are here this morning, let me just share this short story as I close. Because on this journey, one way or the other, we will stop, it will end one day. This elderly man lost a wife some years ago due to a terminal disease. And all of a sudden, the man too approaching the age of 78, the doctor diagnosed him for a terminal disease and they asked, told the doctor told him, he has to get 48 hours to leave. And when the man knows that he has a limited time to leave, the most important things in his life is what begins to come to his mind. I'm sure a man who has 48 hours will not be thinking about building a mansion. I'm sure a man who has 48 hours to leave will not be thinking about money. He began to call on the things that are most important to me. And when the doctor asked him, Doc, sir, elder, you have just about 48 hours to leave. What do you want within this next 48 hours? He said, I have three children, I have three sons. Please just call them for me. I want to speak with them. If that's the last thing I'm going to do before I depart, let me do. So the doctor sent for the three children. The first one was called Akman. The second one was called Kudo. And the third one was called Francis. And the man said, I want to bless my children one after the other. He called Akman. Akman, God will honor you. God will bless you. The old man at his dying bed began to pray for his first son. He said, I introduced Christ to you and you embraced him. At the end of the day, when he was running off the prayer, he said, Akman, good night. Because I know we will see on the other side of the room. He called food of the second son, prayed for him, blessed him, said the same thing. When he was praying for Udo and he was about to move, he said, good night, because I now see you on the other side of life. And when Francis told me, he said, Francis, you are my last son. You are the son of my youth. He began to bless him, and at the point, Baba's voice began to shake. And Baba at his dying bed, tears began to roll out of his eyes. Francis was there when Baba was praying for his eldest brother and his immediate elder brother. He did not see the shaking and the tune and the emotion Baba was exhibiting on him. When Baba still praying for him, Baba said, Good morning. And so Francis asked, Sir, when you prayed for my first eldest brother, Akman, you said, A good night. When you prayed for my million dollar brother, you said, good night. But when it came to my turn, Baba, you said, goodbye. And as soon as it said so, the poor man burst into tears. I began to say, he said to me, Francis, I know I have lost you forever. I know we won't meet again. For your brother, and we will meet on the other side. For your brother, who do who will be on the other side? For oh, Francis, we can never meet again. And the young boy said, or oh, the young man said, is this salvation of God again thing that is important? He said, it is more important than life. It's 
yourself. Now the question I want to ask you tonight, from this up to this moment, is if you were in front of that old man, is it going to be a good night? That's going to be a good night. I want to give you an opportunity this afternoon. Perhaps you have been living your life. It's everywhere they are talking about this Jesus, Jesus, in this salvation thing. Friends, that is an army is as important as that. Is it going to be a good night to live? Or is it going to be a good night? Look at the power of the Jesus. I want to give an opportunity to all the two persons here. You know the kind of life you have been living does not conform with the life of God. And you know that if death closes your eyelid today, you have lost it forever. But you can make it right with God. Such that at the end of the day, you could say, I have hope. Like I was supposed to say, he said, if it is in this world, out of our hopes, he said, we have got of all men most to his freedom. If you want to make it right with God one more time, you want to make it right with God. I just want to say a, few, a, a simple prayer with you. You want to give your life to Christ? Just lift up your hands so that I can see it above your head. Don't be ashamed of it so that I can pray with you. So that you can know that at least if I, if I suffer in this world, I will also reign with him in heaven. But if there is none, let us pray. Father, we just say thank you for your Lord. Thank you for life and time of our body. Thank you because you have helped us to live our own life. Those of us on the journey of life are bringing ourselves to you. We pray that at the end of the day, at the end of our lives, we shall not be in condemnation. Oh, I pray we shall not be in condemnation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. This man put your hands together for all of you. Very quickly, I'd like to welcome uh, uh, work the family members of the, of the disease as our pastor, as one of our pastor, pastor. Uh, and they know that we pray for family members and bless them.
family of siblings, cousins that are here present, please we also want to pray and know with you. Please, if you don't mind, you can come forward. Siblings, family members, cousins, near cousins, far cousins.
you say good night to mommy, we'll meet again at resurrection in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. 